Good morning, Rich from Mountain Soda Garage. Today we're going to be talking about Skidoo's QRS Secondary Clutch. They've been putting this clutch on their mountain sleds for a number of years now. And uh, it's a pretty good clutch. They've changed a little bit over the years. This is a newer model. has these really big cooling fins on the front side, also the back side. If you have a 17 or an 18 um, Skidoo Summit, you're probably not going to have those. They're going to be a lot smaller or almost a little bit non-existent. But this is the newer style that comes on the newer sleds. About This is your Helix. This is what helps your snowmobile shift in and out, helps it back shift and up shift. Um, your rollers, which we're going to be talking about today right on this angle right here. Then your rollers are deep down inside right here. That's the thing we're going to be talking about today is the clutch roller. This clutch is pretty famous for breaking the rollers and having roller problems. And if you break a roller, what that's going to feel like is your snowmobile is not going to accelerate or back shift the way that it did. Suddenly it's going to start acting really weird. It might even get stuck in one gear and the belt might just get stuck halfway in the sheaths here and not be able to move up or down. Um, and you're going to be watching your friend's sled while you're sitting there with a broken snowmobile that you really can't do anything about on the mountain. So since these rollers break so frequently, there's some companies that have made some high, what they call high torque or high performance rollers. Um, the websites, they say they're about 40% stronger, have a higher heat tolerance than the stock rollers and should last you a lot longer. But why are these rollers breaking? That's one of the things we want to talk about. Today we're going to be replacing our rollers with these Fat Brothers rollers. They've been making these rollers for a really long time. Pull one of these rollers out. And if you don't really know how your Helix and Secondary works, I'm just going to show you a little bit. So the Helix comes out here. There is usually a spring in here, but I've already taken it out. So your roller is going to roll on this edge right here with this little notch here rolls up and down on here, your helix twist, and that's what opens and closes your secondary clutch, allows you to shift from low gear to high gear and back, because that roller rolling back and forth on there. But what happens, when you're, at st when you're at a standstill, your roller's gonna end up about right here, and your engine's idling. If you put this in reverse, your engine's gonna spin backwards, and what happens, when you hit the gas with the engine spinning backwards, this is gonna turn like that, the roller's gonna contact over here, and that's when you're gonna go in reverse. You're on this flat angle in reverse, because you don't want to shift up or down in reverse, that's why this notch is here to keep this really from moving in and out. So when you go from being forward, you come to a stop right here. When you put your sled in reverse, if you hit the gas really hard, that slams over like that, and that slams into the roller. And it can hit really hard, especially if you're hitting the gas really hard in reverse. If you're trying to get unstuck or something and you hit the gas really hard, that slamming right there is probably what's breaking the roller. If you're going to hit the gas really hard in reverse, Hit it really softly first, so that's going to move over there in contact there before you hit the gas hard in reverse if you're going to have to do that for some reason. So that's probably why the rollers are breaking, probably. I doubt it's because these are just failing because they get worn. I mean, if they've been in there for a long time, maybe. But probably that hammering effect when you're hitting it in reverse really hard is probably damaging the roller that it fails under normal use. There's only a few brands that really sell these high-performance, high-torque rollers. We're going to show you a couple of broken rollers. And then we'll show you how to replace these. Okay, so now when you're out mountain riding, you want to be able to have fun all day. You don't want any problems with your rollers. So let's just take a look at what some broken rollers may look like. Um, here's one you're looking down inside the clutch. Here's a helix. Here's a little angle that it rolls on. You see the two broken edges there. Kind of kind of ruin your day. Let's look at another one. This one's not necessarily broken, but it's all pitted and charred. That's gonna, really going to affect how your roller rolls up and down that angle on the helix and it's not going to be as efficiently upshifting and backshifting, so you're going to want to replace something that, that looks like that. Um, another broken one, obviously broken in half. The other part's sitting down inside there. So another one broken, just the part sitting out on the table. And I, but let's look at some options on what you can do and where you can go to find some of these if you want to replace them. So first, if you're in the U.S., there's a couple places in the U.S. that make them. One is G-Boost Technologies. Um, they build a lot of parts for side-by-sides. This happens at the same clutch and the same rollers are using some side by side. So they make these really nice extreme rhino roller kit. They make one that's called just a rhino roller kit. It's about half the price of this one. This one's 70 bucks. The other one's I think like half, 34-ish or something. And But I would highly recommend if you're going to spend the money and go to all the work to replace these, get the really nice high performance ones. And there's another company, like I talked about, Fett Brothers has been making these for probably longer than anybody out there. Um, really good roller. They know what they're doing. They've made these for a long time. It comes a little kit with these parts right here. It's really simple to buy them on Amazon. I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, ship straight to my house. I get them in a couple of days. I think this was even on Amazon Prime, so I think I got them in like one or two days. So that's your, those are probably your two options if you're living in the U.S. 
Now, there's a number of like smaller aftermarket companies that sell Fett Brothers rollers and some of the other some of the other aftermarket manufacturer rollers, but those are really the two main places that I see are actually making the rollers. If you're in Canada, there's this company called High Torque Rollers. They've been making these for a while, also in Canada. They make them for a few different clutches. Make sure you get the one for the QRS secondary clutch. Um, but also, I just like if you're in the U.S., it's easier to ship. If you're in the U.S., buying U.S. stuff and have to come across the border. And the same goes for Canada. If you're in Canada, um, shipping from the U.S. to Canada can sometimes be a little messy coming across the border. But these are so small, it shouldn't be a problem. So that's your Canada option. Anyway, those are the places where you can get these. Let's go now. We'll show you how to take the secondary clutch out, and then we'll show you how to replace them. Okay, now I've already pulled the clutch out of this, but it's probably a little easier to show you how to do this. There's this bracket here, fits in right here, and it holds the bearing in the support tower right here that holds the bearing that holds your jack shaft in place. And that bearing retainer has this bolt on the back side of it back here. So what you're going to want to do, it's really easy to get that off without having to pull your hood off and everything. If you've got a swivel head ratchet like this with a 13 millimeter, you just go on the back here and you can ratchet quarter inch with a 13 inch or 13 millimeter socket. You can get it on there pretty easily. Just you just don't want to lose that nut down inside your engine compartment when you pull it off. So make sure you got a good grip on it when you're pulling the nut off on the back side of this. And then you pull that out. That allows the jack shaft to come out this way. Now we've taken our side cover off the exhaust side. We need to pop this rubber cap off that is covers the chain case upper bolt and upper. You just pop that off there. And there's a 15 millimeter bolt in here right here that will have to take off that 15 millimeter bolt. If you lock your brake in place and then that keeps this whole shaft from turning and that way it allows you to be able to loosen it. It can be pretty tight because there's usually some Loctite on there. You don't want to drop any of those parts down in the chain case. So it's good to have a magnet with you to grab the washer and the bolt to hang onto that so it doesn't drop down inside of there and pull that little guy out just like that. Now in order to get the jack shaft out, you're going to need a little tool like this. Um, it's got threads on the end. What this says, it this threads into the end of your jack shaft where this bolt came out. This is going to thread in there. This is going to keep your upper sprocket and your chain from falling down on your chain case when you take this out. So um, you don't want that falling down there. Then you got to take all this apart. You got to pull your chain case cover off and you got to pull it all back. I've done it before. It's a royal pain in the ass. You just don't want it to have happen. So you're going to want to get a tool like this, um, but you can buy them at just about any BRP parts store. So this is going to screw into the threads there and you're going to want to screw all the way in. Once that's all the way in there, you're going to tap this with a hammer and that's going to push the jack shaft out the other side. Just a little rubber mount. You're going to want to hold the jack shaft over here on the other side. See, there we go. Jack shaft is popped out. Now we want to hold this tool and we're going to hold with my left hand, I'm going to hold the jack shaft. Now I'm going to hold the tool completely still and I'm going to rotate the jack shaft and unscrew this off the jack shaft. Rotating the clutch, I'm going to unscrew my tool off. And you want to make sure the tool stays in place. Don't let that fall out because it's holding your, your chain and your upper sprocket and there's a washer behind the sprocket that's all holding in place. Now we have our jack shaft out. Now we're going to go put our rollers in. Go for all right, now if you want to get your jack shaft bearing off your jack shaft on your QRS clutch, it's really difficult. And Skidoo's been making it this way for, uh, I think, since the 2008 model when the XP800 came out. And it's a royal pain in the ass. I remember when this first came out, taking this apart, everyone was so frustrated that the jack shaft and the secondary clutch were all one piece, and it was really just a pain to get out of there. Um, so there aren't really a lot of options to pull your jack shaft bearing off there. Um, there's this one, the CT Power Sports makes this. It's a nice unit. I think it's like 50 bucks. Um, it fits on your clutch like this. You got to screw all these screws in individually, the nuts on these shafts to pull the bearing up this way and it pulls off. You only have to move the bearing maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch before it pops off and you lift it up. You don't have to do it very far. That's one way to do it. There's another one. This is another one that I saw for sale on eBay, 90 bucks. Um, a little bit easier because it's got a center screw in the middle that pushes down the end of your jack shaft. So you're only screwing one screw in. 
Um, if, if you're going to have, if you have a bunch of friends that's got ski and you all want to go in on these tools, it makes it a lot simpler, a lot more cost effective than if you're just going to buy a $90 tool on your own to do one clutch. So I'm going to show you the way I did it. I just used some standard garage home tools with a couple things I bought at Ace Hardware in order to um, make my clutch puller. And so let's go over the bench. I'll show you what I did. Okay, so I've got my jack shaft and my clutch in a vise here. This is kind of your standard Harbor Freight bearing race puller. Um, they come in a kit now, and uh, most, almost all of them have these holes in the bottom you can put a screw through. This is just some 3 8 inch really long screw that I bought. At, you can buy this at Home Depot, you can buy it at Lowe's, you can buy it at Ace Hardware. And I have like a 18 inch piece here, goes all the way up here. And this is just a regular balancer, like a harmonic balancer puller that I got for also, I think, from Harder Freight as well. And I got this whole thing set up just like this. It's pretty easy to do to make this. Um, you just need a few parts. Put my three inch drill on there. And as you can see, as I pull on this, there, popped off. My bearing is now off. Super simple way to do it. Um, so now I've got this in a vise. Um, it's being held by the jack shaft. Um, I have my tool on it, my spring compressor tool. I've got all four of the bolts out of the back side that hold the helix in place. Now this helix, if you've never taken one of these apart before, it's held under spring pressure. So you don't want to take those off without a special, without the right tool to undo this. So you're going to, until all the spring pressure's off it, Now, if you want to make sure you get this back in in the right spot so you're not guessing, you're going to want to mark your clutch. So we're going to mark this here, and we're going to mark this here. So we know when this goes back on, this is going to go right there. Um, you don't have to do this if you know the way it goes, but if you're new to this, you want to make sure you get your helix because it can go one of two ways. The one way it's going to work, the other way you put it in, it's not going to work, or your helix is going to be rubbing metal on metal if you put it in the wrong direction. So you can see my rollers down in here. They seem to be in pretty good shape, but we're going to replace them off because that allows you to take this movable sheath off. And then your rollers, you can see are right down in there. And there's a little pin that holds the roller screw bolt in. This is the roller screw that goes through the roller the roller pivots on that and there's a pin right in this hole right here. You got to punch that out in order to get that screw out. So we're going to put this in the vise. Make sure your jack shaft is protected from any teeth if you're going to like lock it in a vise like this. And then we're going to put this little punch. It needs to be about 80 thousandths round in order to fit down this hole. And that just comes out like that. This is the pin that holds this torx bit in place. Now if you don't have a little punch like this that fits in the hole, I actually had to make this one. It was just a little bit too big. Again, like I said, you want something that's about 80 thousandths of an inch. And so I actually turned this one down to 80 thousandths. Now I'm going to show you how I did that. I had I put it in my, chucked it in my electric drill. And then I had a nice sander like this. You could probably use something else if you wanted to, but turn that on. And then I turned my drill up against it like that and I was able to I was able to shave this down to pretty even 80 thousandths all the way across there. It actually worked pretty good. So uh, if you don't have one, if you need to make one, that's an easy way to make it. You know, before you take this out, since this screw on this end has a hole through it where the pin goes through, you want to make sure when you tighten this back down, you can't torque this to any certain torqueness because then it could pull the hole that goes in your screw. You might turn it past the hole that's through here and you won't be able to get your pin in. So we want to do you want to mark this right exactly so you can tight this back in this exact same spot that it came out of before you remove that pivot bolt. That's out. Roller falls out the bottom. That roller is actually in pretty good shape. I don't see any damage to it. And then our pivot, you can see how it's got that hole through it where the pin goes through it to hold this pivot bolt in place. Okay, now these come with a little th thrust washer that come with these heavy duty rollers. Now I am just going to put a little dab of grease right on there. And that's going to help the washer just stick to that in place. 
because I got to drop it down in there and I got to put the pin through here and through the washer and then, then the roller and I don't want the pin falling out so I'm going to hold on to this with these drop this down in here kind of hold it to where about where the hole is then I'm going to put my bolt through the hole feed it through the washer and the roller and then we're going to screw this into place now we're going to turn this upside down so we can put the pin back in from the other side the locking pin is going to go right back in that hole right there now if you're not sure how lined up you can put this in there and tighten this bolt a little bit just until you're close to my mark my mark is about right right around here there we go now we got our punch that we punched our pin out with it fits down all the way through pretty nicely so that we should be able to get our pin all the way down through there now to get the pin started I've taken it to the grinder and I've tapered that a little bit that just helps the pin get started in the hole and hold that there This is a, an aluminum shaft. I don't really want to be pounding on this with steel on steel because it will mushroom that head a little bit. So I just use this aluminum shaft and then pound that as far in as I can go with that and then punch it all the way in with that. Okay, now we're in. Our high torque rollers are in. Now we just got to put the sheath back on. press that bearing back on and we're good to put it all back together. Okay, now we're at the shop. We're going to press our bearing back on our shaft. Now if you look at this shaft, it's got a little lip right here. We want to make sure when you press this on, you press it all the way down so it sits against that lip right there. So it gets the bearing in the correct place. So we're going to slide our bearing over this. When you do this, make sure you have your movable sheath on here. One of the first times I did this 10 or 12 years ago, I forgot to put my movable sheet back on, press the bearing on, and realized I had to pull all apart. And bearings on, maybe a little lubrication so that doesn't stick when it's going on. And we're just gonna press this down here. Okay, now you can see our bearing down there. Just pressing it on into place. Pretty simple. going to seat it right down the bottom there right against the lip just a little pressure on it don't want to push it too hard because it could break something there we go our bearings on to place and seated where it's supposed to be now we can go install the jack shaft and clutch back in our machine okay, now we're going to put our helix back together into our secondary clutch this so you kind of get an idea of how the secondary clutch works so i don't have the spring in this right now but what's going to happen snowmobile shifts from low gear right here this is idling and low gear as it shifts out to high gear the helix is going to roll on the rollers and kind of twist a little bit like that it twists the helix and the secondary sheath that's movable and they both go in and out like that from low gear to high gear and back to low gear again that's kind of how that works and then depending on what spring you have in there is also going to affect how that works but we're going to pull this apart we're going to put the spring in it and uh, then we're going to put it all back together. We're going to put this back in the machine. So another thing I'm going to put in here, I want to put this back together. There's these little Teflon spacers. Oh, they go on each end of the spring like that. And one right there. That allows these to move more smoothly. If you didn't have those on there, as, this, as that helix twists in and out, as the spring twists in and out, it kind of grinds into the aluminum back here in here and doesn't move as, and doesn't shift as smoothly and also where the spring goes here on the secondary clutch it kind of grinds you can feel it grind it doesn't move as smoothly so if you put these teflon spacers in here your clutch is going to shift in and out a little more smoothly one goes on the, the helix side and one's going to go on the clutch side i'm going to put that in there and then remember we had our drawer line here and over here we're going to line that up so our helix ends up in the right space we're going to put our tool back in that's going to allow us to compress the helix remember this goes on here this goes on here then 
this just allows us to tighten this down so you can get your bolts in. Now, remember earlier in the video, I talked to you about which these are the Torx bolts that go into the back of the helix here. If you ever want to be able to swap this helix or spring out again on the mountain or in your garage without having to pull a shaft out, I highly recommend you exchange these Torx bits out on the back here for a hex head bolt like this. I got these at uh, Ace Hardware. They're called a, I think a flange metric bolt. Um, they have a, a built-in washer on them. This is a M8 by 1.25 thread. Um, easy to get. I think they're 85 cents or maybe a dollar a piece. And when you put these on, I would put a good amount of blue Loctite on them. Because this is one thing you don't want coming out while you're riding. I've seen people who's had their helix come apart while they're riding, and it <laughs> makes for not a very fun day. I'm going to show you something else when you put this back together that you're going to want to be aware of. This helix, both of this sheath and this sheath, are balanced as a pair. And they have a little arrow. See that arrow there? There's another arrow on the other side over here. See that arrow right there? Both those arrows you want, I actually drew a black line across where my arrows are. You want those lined up because that's how this is balanced here. And then when you put your bolt back in, you need to line this up just a little bit like that. Put our bolts in like that. And then we're going to put in all the bolts. We'll torque them down to proper torque, and then we'll put this back in the machine. Now, before we put our jack shaft back in, we have to remember that this end of the jack shaft has to screw into the tool that we left in place that goes through our chain case. And that tool, you can see right here, the end of the threads are just right there. And we're going to have to screw our jack shaft into that. Okay, now we're going to put our jack shaft and our clutch back in. Remember, the jack shaft goes through this tower right here that holds our jack shaft bearing. We're going to slide this through here. We're going to try and aim it toward the threads on the tool that we just showed you. You don't want to push it out, so it's easy to have someone else help you. So if you reach across the other side to where the tool is, and then you can kind of slowly rotate the jack shaft, rotate the jack shaft and screw it into the tool. Now if we show you the other side here, you can see that the you see that the jack shaft there where the splines at is screwed into my aluminum tool right there next to it. It's screwed all the way in, so that's where we want to be. Okay, the next, next part of this, it's kind of difficult, is you gotta kind of feed this back through to the other side. And you gotta kind of work the bearing into the bearing tower. And then you also have to get the splines on the jack shaft to engage with the splines on your top sprocket on the other side. Now on this side you have to work the upper gear here, your chain case, onto the splines on the other side. And it's a little bit easier to do if you have someone on the other side move the jack shaft back and forth a little bit. Then you can kind of push on the, the sh gear with a screwdriver like this. And then you can usually get them to engage enough. And now we wiggle the other side a little bit. And I think we've got this pretty much in all the way to where we can take our tool off. So we're going to unscrew our tool here. We're going to take a look in there. See that our jack shaft right here is pretty much engaged in all the teeth on both the jack shaft and the sprocket. So we can go ahead, put some Loctite in our bolt, screw our bolt in, and torque that bolt down to the spec. Put the cover back on, put this side back together. We want to tighten the jip bolt on the jack shaft retaining bracket on the other side, put the belt on, put the cover on, and then uh, we're all finished. Okay, Skeeter here's all finished. Jack shaft and the secondary clutch are all buttoned up, belts on, runs, everything seems to work well. Uh, now we got to do is uh, go run it. Um, we have enough snow here in Utah where we can probably go out do a little trail ride. Um, snow's coming and this thing's ready for it. Got a few other things we're going to be putting on this coming up, so stay tuned and uh, look for our next videos. If you want more detailed information how to pull the jack shaft, the secondary clutch, and how to put it back in, I'm going to make another more detailed video because I kind of went over it pretty quickly in this one, kind of assuming that some people knew. But if you want a more detailed look for that, it'll be um, Skidoo QRS jack shaft removal video. Look for that coming up. It'll probably come up in the next few days or week. can hardly wait for the season to get started. Um, make sure you share the videos, like them. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time at Mountain Slaughter Garage.